In this video, we are going to discuss about how the marinal medullary interstitium becomes hyperosmotic. Process of generation of this gradient can be explained by using hypothetical steps. This is the diagram of loop of Hende that I am using to explain the process. So this is the descending limb and this is the ascending limb without a thin part. That means this represents only the thick part of the ascending limb fluid leaving the proximal convoluted tubule which has 300 milliosmoles per liter osmolality enters the descending part of the loop of Henle. First, the loop of Henle is filled with this fluid. Secondly, the ion transport is in thick ascending limb transport ions into the interstitium. By this action, solid osmolarity inside the tubule is reduced and solid osmolarity outside the tubule is increased. It produces an osmotic gradient between the tubular fluid and interstitial fluid. The limit of this gradient formed between them is 200 milliosmoles per liter. When thick ascending limb transport 100 milliosmoles per liter solutes from the tubular fluid to the interstitium, the limiting gradient is reached. After transporting the ions, here inside is 200 milliosmoles per liter and in outside is 400 milliosmoles per liter. The gradient is 200 milliosmoles per liter. In descending limb of loop of Henle, water moves out by osmosis. So tubular fluid and interstitial fluid in here get equilibrate. Osmolarity in the tubular fluid increase and quickly become equal to the renal medullary osmolarity. Here you might think that interstitium will dilute and its osmolarity will be reduced. But because of the continued transport of ions out of the thick part of the ascending limb of loop of Henle, the interstitial osmolarity is maintained at 400 milliosmoles per liter. However, fluid that has osmolarity of 300 milliosmoles per liter is continuously entering the descending part of the loop of Henle. It pushes the column of the tubular fluid along the loop of Henle. Now, two important things will happen. Number one, by an immediate equilibration, a negligible volume of interstitium acquires the osmolarity of the descending limb, which dilutes the top of the interstitium. So this part is now 300 milliosmoles per liter. Then the gradient against which the ions are transported from the thick part of the ascending limb of loop of Henle is reduced. When the transporters in the this part of the of ascending limb of loop of Henle transport 50 milliosmoles per liter ions, it will reach the limiting gradient 200. See here, outside is 350 milliosmoles per liter and inside here is 150 milliosmoles per liter. Meanwhile, hyperosmotic fluid previously formed in the descending limb of loop of Henle flows to the thick part of the ascending limb of loop of Henle. In this thick ascending limb, more ions are transported out by transporters until the gradient of 200 milliosmoles per liter is established between tubular fluid and interstitium. When 100 milliosmoles per liter of ions are transported out of this part, limiting gradient is reached. See here, inside is now 300 milliosmoles per liter and outside is 500 milliosmoles per liter. But again, the fluid in the descending limb will equilibrate with the interstitium because of the osmosis of the water. Tibular osmolarity becomes equal to the marinal medullary osmolarity now. So when isotonic fluid from the proximal tubules come again, this hypotonic fluid moves again to the descending part. Like this, when 4, 5 and 6 steps get repeated over and over, more and more ions will be added and trapped in medulla in excess of water eventually raising the interstitial fluid osmolarity. It will produce this kind of equilibrium. You can see here, still the gradient of 200 milliosmoles per liter 
is remaining. So thank you for watching my video. I hope you got it clearly. Let's meet again.